and tidiness. These are the absolute musts in the hospitality industry. These factors, which influence first our health and then our personal comfort, are the main reasons for guest satisfaction and continuity. The department in charge of the sensitive task is housekeeping. If we need to define housekeeping in general terms, it is the department that carries out the cleaning and maintenance functions in every part of the facility, giving particular importance to hygiene and aesthetics in the framework of the standards targeted and financial potential of the facility in the hospitality industry. Every accommodation facility has a housekeeping department, despite the differences in their standards and sizes. Although it is considered as a support department, it has very significant impact on guest impressions and makes great contribution to the budget, income growth, and public relations. Therefore, the staff of this department is chosen from those that are careful, with proper personal hygiene, honest, energetic, well-disciplined, cheerful, who can take initiative and are good at human relations. Before going through the course of work of the housekeeping staff, let's take a look at the rules about the personal appearance and hygiene of the members of this department. They should be attentive to their uniforms and aware of the fact that they represent the facility, The uniform should be stainless and ironed and should not be ragged or torn. Name tags should always be worn. Hair should be properly combed and tied up. Excessive makeup should be avoided. And no accessory other than a wedding ring and watch should be worn. Hands should frequently be washed with liquid soap. And nails should be kept short and clean. Special importance should be given to dental health and oral hygiene. For body cleanliness, frequent showers are recommended to avoid sweating and unpleasant odors. Fresh deodorants should be used. Shoes worn in the facility should be clean and polished. shoes that do not make noise or slip should be chosen. Foot care and cleanliness should be given importance. Now, let's take a look at the housekeeping office. Cleaning materials, guest needs, and extra supplies that are not put on carts are stored here. The tidiness of this office influences the quality of work. We should keep the housekeeping office tidy, clean, and ventilated, and place the supplies according to the order of use. We should also classify them according to type and size. We should never leave a moist or wet material. We should cover the clean linens on the shelves with a clean cloth.
the housekeeping office should always be kept locked. The guests call all the employees of this department as housekeeping. Merhabalar, 1627 iki tane banyo havlusu alabilir miyiz? Teşekkürler. In fact, there are differences among them in title, task, and hierarchy. So let's take a look at the job definition of the employees of this department. Based on the occupational standards nationally and internationally, the Ministry of Culture and Tourism, in order to determine the principles of national competencies in both technical and occupational standards, and to contribute to certification activities, has created national occupational standards regarding housekeeping in the hospitality industry. These standards were a result of the cooperation it took with the tourism sector within the scope of the protocol signed with the Professional Competency Board. The fifth level housekeeping employee, the executive housekeeper, is the top level manager of the housekeeping department. He or she is responsible for making sure that all the services rendered are complete and in line with the structure of the facility. He or she has the knowledge and skill of management. The fourth level housekeeping employee, the deputy executive housekeeper, plans the tasks to be done and carries out supervision and training programs. He or she has the knowledge and skill to fulfill his or her manager's tasks and responsibilities when he or she is absent. The floor supervisor is a third level housekeeping employee who is responsible for supervision of procedures regarding cleaning, order and maintenance of the floors he or she is responsible for the inspection of his or her subordinates. The public area supervisor is at the third level. He or she reports to the floor manager. He or she is responsible for procedures regarding cleaning, order, and maintenance of all areas except for the guest rooms. He or she is also responsible for the inspection of his or her subordinates. Room attendants are among second level employees. They have the knowledge and skills to carry out tasks such as the cleaning, tidying, and maintenance of guest rooms, corridors, stairs, elevators, and housekeeping offices. The public area attendant is a second level employee. He or she has the knowledge and skills to carry out tasks such as dusting, stain removal, sweeping, wiping, mopping, polishing, washing, waxing, and buffing. In this training program, we will learn in detail the responsibilities of housekeeping employees, the preparations they should make, and how they should act and things they should take into account while they perform their tasks. comprehend the operation process of housekeeping services, which is one of the visible aspects of the facility. The housekeeping department should work in coordination with other departments of the facility. The front office and the departments of maintenance, food and beverages, purchases and security are those that are in direct contact with the housekeeping department. It should establish this relationship in an efficient and responsive way in order to perform its activities properly and successfully. The correct use of reports and forms is also important for housekeeping employees, just like many other departments. Reporting is an inseparable part of the process for following the workflow and rendering service at the desired standard. Room attendant reports are prepared two times a day, in the morning and in the evening. These show the situation of the room and the number of people. It is a report of critical importance to avoid getting sidetracked.
There are many cleaning materials and tools the housekeeping employees use when performing their tasks. The order and cleanliness of the cart is of vital importance for execution of the services to be timely and in accordance with standards. It should be checked that the cart is in good condition and its capacity should not be exceeded when loading the supplies. The cart should never be placed in a way blocking the passage or fire exits. No damage should be done to the environment while moving the cart. Correct use of the housekeeping cart is an important factor lessening the workload. How should the rooms, which are the personal use areas of guests, be cleaned and prepared in hospitality facilities? The most important thing to be kept in mind is that comfort and ease of use should also be accomplished in addition to cleanliness and tidiness. Room cleaning is composed of some steps, including those that should be done before starting the task. Let's take a look at what they are. First of all, the floor corridor should be checked. It should be determined which rooms do not want to be disturbed that request cleaning, that are empty and clean, and those that are checked out. How will we start the cleaning of a checked out room? First of all, we should knock on the door three times and go in saying, housekeeping, We should keep the room door open during cleaning. First, we should check for damage or breakdown in fixtures and look whether there is anything forgotten by the guest. The garbage should be collected. Dirty dishes should be taken out to the service area, and the windows should be opened for ventilation. After removing the dirty linen, we can start making up the bed. By the way, let's remind you that the dirty textile is delivered to the laundry by housekeeping employees. There are some rules for making beds. That is how we achieve an aesthetic look and ease of use. Let's take a look at these rules. Before beginning, hands and uniform should be clean and dry. The materials brought for making the bed should be checked to make sure that they are clean, ironed, stainless and free of rips. First, we should pull the bed forwards. First the fitted sheet and then the sheet is placed. The place sheet is folded in an envelope or corner form. The blanket put inside the linen is placed on the bed.
Make sure the pillowcases do not touch your uniform or your body while putting them on. The open end of the pillowcase should be placed in a way not visible to the guest when he or she enters the room. As the last stop, the bedspread is placed properly. We can do the same procedures in occupied rooms. Turn down service is a practice upon the guest request or as a gesture reflecting the service policy of the facility. The bedspread is removed and the bed is opened as desired. Night clothes and slippers are placed and the facility's treat is left. Windows and curtains are closed. Suitable light is arranged. We recheck to make sure everything is in place before leaving the room. The next step is dusting. First, the dust rag should be folded in the right size. Dusting starts from the closest spot to the door and finishes at the same place. Dusting should be made in movements according to the shape of the surface and materials suitable for surface type should be used. The electrical devices should be disconnected before dusting. The duster should be frequently washed and all the materials should be collected after the work is over. The bathroom where the guests meet their personal hygiene and toilet needs is the most important place, especially in terms of health. The rules of hygiene should be precisely followed here. Now let's take a look at the procedures and rules to be followed. Bathroom cleaning can be easily completed with the necessary tools and by following a certain order. It is of vital importance to comply with rules of hygiene and sanitation. We should take the environment card practice into consideration while collecting the dirty bathroom textiles. First, we should check for breakdowns and the flush tank should be tested. Cleaning materials should be poured into the closet and the covers should be closed. The closet should be cleaned in line with the rules. The shower screens, mirrors and other glass surfaces should be cleaned. Stains on doors and walls, if any, should be wiped. The gloves are taken off after this stage and supplies and hotel guest amenities are placed. The gloves are worn again. The floor and trash bin are cleaned. Bathroom cleaning is completed after final checks.
The windows of rooms and public areas should always be clean in a hospitality facility. There are rules to be followed in window cleaning. We should first follow the safety rules. The furniture near curtains and windows, if any, are removed. We should do the cleaning with from outside to inside and from top to bottom movements. The frame should be cleaned with products suitable for their materials. The dirty tools should be frequently washed and the water should be frequently replaced. Carpets, cloth-covered furniture, and other textile products are periodically cleaned. The cleaning of such materials should also be made according to the rules. Otherwise, their appearance and structure will be destroyed and their economic life will be shortened. The carpets are vacuumed before being washed. The stains are determined during this procedure. Stain removal is made using the right material for the surface and with from outside to center movements. Then the carpets are washed and nothing is placed on them until they are dry. We should use these electrical devices in accordance with safety rules and their purposes. The cables should be unwound and rewound carefully. The daily maintenance of the devices should be made and they should be stored when dry. The room cleaning is completed with a final check after these steps are taken. The hard floor surfaces, which are more common in public areas, are cleaned with water and suitable tools. We call this task mopping. Before starting mopping, we should place warning signs to avoid possible accidents. The floor should first be swept and mopping should start from the furthest point from the exit. We should collect all tools after mopping is over. There are metals in many places in hospitality facilities, just like in our own living spaces. Each has a different method of cleaning. But the common rule for all is that we cannot start cleaning before dusting them. If the procedures are done according to rules, the appliances will not only look good, but also their economic life will be extended. One of the ways to make a hospitality facility look gorgeous is waxing the floors. Waxing is not only for looks, but also for protection. This can be done manually or by use of a machine. We should again place a warning sign before starting. We should remove the previous wax from the floor and do it on a dry surface. Of course, using the correct tools again. One of the things to be noted is that the wax should be applied in thin layers. The procedure continues until the desired result is reached. At least three layers of wax should be applied on marble surfaces.
Sometimes, there may be a need to change the room of a guest due to various reasons in hospitality facilities. There are things to be kept in mind in this case. Firstly, it should be made upon the instruction of the superior and within the guest's knowledge. The new room should be checked, the belongings of the guest should be carried, starting from the heaviest one, and it should be double-checked that nothing is forgotten in the previous room. We should keep the doors of both rooms closed while doing these. The work of the housekeeping department always reflects on the hospitality facility either as satisfaction or complaint. So please keep in mind that your guest's hygiene and comfort depends on your attention and careful work.